Amazing. Right. So uh, let's get started with today's workshop. So hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Uh, today's workshop is uh, Squid Development Deep Dive. Let's conquer the giant squid. Uh, definitely one of my favorite titles of, <laughs> of this hackathon. Uh, so without further ado, I'd love to invite uh, Massimo to the stage. There we go. OK. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Amazing. Uh, go ahead and um, share your screen and I'll just quickly. There we go. OK. <laughs> I just uh, jump right in. Entire screen. There we go. So yeah, let's get away from the inception and move on to the uh, topic of today's um, presentation or workshop. So yeah, as the um, um, as Johanna was saying, uh, today's topic is uh, let's conquer the giant squid. We have uh, officially launched it uh, last month, and the name is quite is quite like resounding. We love puns and and making fun of our own name and whatnot. Uh, but uh, as the name says, it can be intimidated. I'm going to try and, and explain uh, what it is and why it shouldn't scare everybody off. Um, so uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Massimo Luraski. I'm developer, ad developer advocate at Subsquid. Uh, so here are my uh, socials. I'm also present on, on Discord and on our own Discord as well uh, for all of the uh, developers asking questions there. And um, yeah, this like all of these are three I's uh, in, in upper case, not uh, three L's or ones, uh, just for everyone searching me up. And uh, so I, since I, I already done a, a workshop uh, a couple of weeks ago, I'm going to quickly go over the details of Subsquid, but I'm going to be a little bit faster to save uh, some, time for the, some time for the rest of the workshop. So what is Subsquid? First of all, it's an indexing uh, middleware framework. And what is an indexing uh, middleware? First of all, it's uh, something that you put in the middle, right, as the name says, between the blockchain and your DAP. It, this is not exactly right, but it's like it covers 90, 95% of the use cases. It's what you want to use when you want to access on-chain data and show it uh, somewhere else or access it somewhere else. And uh, you don't want necessarily to, um, to clog the uh, blockchain uh, nodes with your own requests, first of all, first and foremost. But also it's very useful when you like when these nodes don't ask, don't offer uh, the exact data you need, or to have it uh, the way you actually need it, it needs some additional computation, uh, and this is why uh, you you need an in indexing. Indexing is the first and foremost uh, uh, use case. For example, the example here is uh, who are uh, what are the NFTs owned by uh, Alice? Uh, I know the Ali I know Alice's uh, on-chain address, but I don't know all of the uh, NFTs that she owns. To do so, I would have to scour the entire blockchain and see whenever she bought one, uh, keep it in in memory somewhere else, and and compile the whole list. This is exactly what you can do with, uh, with indexing middleware. So why is it important? Like I said, it minimizes the network request because you don't have to keep going back and forth uh, requesting all of the blocks one time. This has been done once for you and you could just do a single uh, request. It minimizes the on-device storage because when, same thing, if you want to do it yourself, you would have to uh, like grab grab all the data for yourself and then uh, go through it. Instead, this has been done and you just have to do one request. And uh, it because of the um, because of the way Subsquid is it's built, it allows you for seamless updates as well. And it's also inherently multi-chain because we offer uh, the data services, which we call archives, which are inherently multi-chain. They are built to index one chain at a time and they offer the same interfaces. So you can build squids for whatever uh, chain you want. Um, I spoke about the, the architecture and this is how it's done. It's sort of like divided into, uh, so we imagine a single data pipeline divided into multiple sections. The first and foremost is the ingestion part, which is in charge of, well, doing what I said you shouldn't do, 
and that's why we do it. We do it only once so that you don't have to, which is the uh, connecting directly to blockchain nodes and extracting raw data. We do it and, and like process it in a minimal fashion to make sure that you have access to the same unchanged data, but it's normalized and categorized. So it's easier to access because, I mean, uh, you, you can not necessarily arbitrarily access block number X, Y, Z. Uh, with our archives, you, you actually can. And uh, you can also um, ask for the data uh, that's in it, uh, similar to what you can do with a block explorer, essentially. But our framework, which is what enables you to do the processing part, allows you to, well, process right this, this raw data and process it in any kind of way to allow for the data presentation to serve multiple purposes like data science analytics simple graphql api for your your dap um, our approach as i said is to change from traditional approaches uh, that have been used uh, previously uh, which were monolith and move to a more modular uh, approach so that you, when you want to build your own indexing middleware, you don't have to do everything in one go. You can only take care of the processing part because the, the um, ingestion has been done previously and you just plug into it. And uh, it, this is the two models are separate, they are decoupled. You only care about one and we take care of the rest. Uh, the data flow is, well, fairly simplistically, uh, as I said, it's the, the archive, which is the sort of data service that we offer, uh, is taking care of the ingestion, uh, the basic processing and saving onto a database for easier access, and a, 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 an API that you can uh, connect to. Um, the benefits are a lot of the stuff that I just mentioned. You just don't care about this part because it's been done, and it, they allow you for they allow for um, faster access, filtering, batching, uh, reducing network overhead, and so on and so forth. The squids instead is what you actually build yourself. Uh, it, some of them have already been built, and we imagine that the community uh, of like the the list of pre-built squid built by the community is only keep growing is only going to keep growing. And, uh, but in general, if you don't find what you want, uh, you, can ask, you can create your own. And what they do is they connect to the archive and apply the custom logic that you need and uh, serve this data uh, through an API if you want. This is like a, a non-mandatory, it just comes with the SDK. But if you only care about saving data somewhere else, I have a few examples that save onto a database, onto CSV, onto parquet files, save data onto an S3 bucket, for example. And um, what, the SP, uh, what the SDK offers is some uh, very useful automation for example, you can define uh, the entities that you want to save into uh, a GraphQL uh, dialect, and, uh, and the uh, TypeScript code is generated for you. It also automatically generates um, types, uh, conversions, and functions from a smart contract API in case of EVM or from substrate uh, types uh, by reading the, on ch the blockchain uh, uh, metadata. Uh, you also, this I see it as a benefit, some might not, but uh, as a developer I do. Uh, this is code, it's not configuration. It, it's less like jamming config files together. It's more about like having a, a coherent project that you can uh, execute and, and launch locally. I find it easier uh, to navigate myself. And last but not least, I, men I, I mentioned it, the type safety offered by, um, by TypeScript, for example. Um, uh, the last thing in here, I have an example. Uh, what is aquarium is where is where squids go to swim. <laughs> in our case, it's the host, hosting service for uh, squid projects that you build yourself. Uh, just with these two lines, actually the first one is installing the dependency. So just with this, uh, you can have your project uh, deployed and running in our servers um, for free. Um, and, uh, and you can manage them uh, at this uh, URL. But this is uh, about conquering the giant squid, so let's dive into it. I'm gonna open the, uh, a new tab. Let's exit and get here. And I have to zoom in a lot, I imagine. Uh, this is the repository 
uh, that is in charge of, uh, well, that has the code, that contains the code that is deployed uh, for the giant squid. The giant squid has two endpoints for each chain. Uh, the explorer is, as the name says, uh, well, kind of like a block explorer, and it serves an actual block explorer, which is called Calamar. And uh, this one is more interesting one that has the stats for each chain. And I'm starting with the schema. Um, it's a little bit long, but uh, most of it is just uh, fields. Um, I feel like the, the most interesting thing from a high level perspective is the uh, types or the entities. So what this does is it's, as the name says, it's collecting uh, statistics about the blockchain. In this case, it's just telling me uh, how many extrinsics and when uh, have they um, occurred uh, with the timestamp, uh, the block hash, when each extrinsic uh, happened, uh, how many transferred, uh, the stake value for each chain, uh, information about validators and nominators, etc., uh, the issuance of, of tokens and how many token, token holders, uh, that the kind of information that you see when you go, for example, to, to uh, subscan and you see on top of uh, the page, that's sort of like an overview of each chain. Uh, well, we have made it possible to, uh, um, to have that information uh, in, a, in an API endpoint um, served by the uh, giant squid. Uh, by so the way, it's called, yes? Sorry, my uh, Can we zoom in just ever, ever so a slightly? A little bit more? Yeah, please. Let's go. Is it Thank better? <laughs> yeah. Let's do one more. Why not? Um, and I think this is totals, but uh, as the name says, it's just a total. So how many collators, how many uh, nominator pools are there? Uh, what's the current era? The Yeah, it's sort of like a, a, a totals of all of the other entities that I just showed you. Um, I don't know exactly what the task result is. I think I've been told this is going to be deprecated. Um, but this is it, essentially. And how this is done, uh, the giant squid is nothing else than a normal squid. It's just, it has been developed to be configurable and to be one repository and a few configuration files so that we can launch multiple instances of the same, just configured to index different uh, blockchains. And the way it's done, it's uh, by the M file, I think. No, not even. Uh, it's in the uh, configuration chains. So it has different um, uh, substrate types for each chain. Right in this branch that I'm looking at, it's only these four. Um, but it's because it's under heavy, heavy development. So uh, I think that main is not the stable one so far. This uh, branch is the one that has the most uh, complete uh, features, but uh, I don't think that it's actually the one with the most chains. Uh, the, 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 um, the deployed giant squid has actually a couple more chains uh, and it's only gonna uh, expand uh, we are cautious in making the endpoints public uh, if they're not fully tested by, by the team. And the way it's done, like I was mentioning the configuration, is just saying where should it start, what's the block range, uh, the name of the chain, the archive, the um, RPC node. These, this is all stuff that is going to be uh, used by the processor. And if we go and take a look at the, sorry, and the processor itself, this is where the core logic of, the, of each uh, squid uh, is defined. Uh, it's importing from, let me see, concrete somewhere, yes. And I think this is defined, yeah, in here, right? It's in the same folder I was showing you earlier. And uh, it, this is how it becomes giant. It's actually almost like, an inception thing where each tentacle of the giant squid is a squid in and of itself. Uh, I don't think this is the best definition, but it's uh, as good as I can as I can provide. Um, but this is it, right? And uh, I am talking about this because we have a few bounties for the upcoming uh, hackathon. I think it's better if I go back to the presentation. And uh, yes, 
So it's uh, one, two, and three. The first one is uh, simply a data validation tool for Giant Squid. And this is where I was going with the testing. Uh, of course, as the um, giant squid gets bigger and bigger, it's going to be harder and harder to test it manually. So what we want to do with this uh, bounty right here, as the um, text says, um, we want to automate some of this stuff. And so the idea is to compare the data that comes from the giant squid uh, with some um, useful uh, and, and valid, uh, of course, data sets uh, that can essentially make sure that the data that comes from the giant squid is uh, valid and uh, doesn't contain any errors, miscalculations or, or whatever. There's no, there's no flaws in the logic, for example. And, uh, and yeah, we can essentially every, with every release run this data validation and make sure that we have not compromised uh, the service. And uh, since I'm here, there's this link to Calamar. Calamar is the uh, explorer that I was talking about. And it's been built, uh, it's a, an open source uh, explorer for the, um, um, for the Polkadot community. And it's been built using the giant squid. So if we, for example, let's look at uh, Polkadot, show the latest extrinsic, it kind of looks like uh, you want an explorer to look. So it has the idea of the extrinsic, the name, uh, the account that is, I don't know why not all of them have it. Uh, well, some of them, yeah, I think it's normal. But let's see balances transfer, for example. Um, as you can see, it contains all of the information, timestamp, block time, whatever, you name it. And let's go back to the bounty. So this is pretty self-exploratory. Uh, the only issue is finding uh, the data fixer um, that uh, we can compare the, the um, giant squid data to, for example. But I would leave it up to the submitters to find the best strategy. Um, the other uh, bounty uh, created for this hackathon is an interesting one, not too complicated, but it's, it should be it's still uh, nice to tackle, I think. Um, we want to, of course, provide a status of uh, each end, uh, endpoint of, of the each tentacle of the giant squid, and the way you can do this is by uh, making sure by using this query, which exposes the height of the um, of the like the latest block that has been uh, indexed by the giant squid, and you can compare it to the actual RPC node of the uh, blockchain. And uh, to give you an idea of what we, what we mean with the status, you can use the archive status page, uh, which is this one. And this essentially tells you that the Akala, oh, let's zoom in, really, that the Akala archive is healthy because uh, it's, uh, it has uh, reached the head of the blockchain and it's keeping sync. And so, so like the same thing for the others. For example, Bifrost is a little bit behind, but not too much, actually. It's just one block. Um, so something like this, up to you to decide the styling and what kind of information you, you want to add. Um, the last one, I think, is the most interesting one, most, uh, I wouldn't say difficult, but still. Um, this actually comes from Polk uh, Parity uh, Technology directly. They uh, are having a few issues with their uh, staking um, uh, dashboard because of this, um, this issue that they expressed in here. So what happens is when, you, um, when you're working with proxies, uh, I'm going to explain it in a second, you can essentially delegate a, a, um, uh, an account to do your own bidding, but uh, you can only explore the relationship in one direction. So giving one account, you can see which proxies it has. Uh, but when you interact from the DAP perspective, you interact with the potential proxy uh, account. So you don't know if it's actually a proxy of someone else. And uh, this information is present on chain, but the relationship is inverse. So the best way to do it, because they don't want to double um, they, they don't want to um, introduce duplicate information on chain is to use an indexer. This is also one of the very useful uh, use cases for an indexer. And so this is what we ask you guys to do. Um, I think if I go back to the presentation, we can start uh, working on an example of how you can 
uh, respond or um, fix this issue for, for uh, parity. Let's start by uh, making sure that we have the uh, requisite ready. So you have to have installed on your uh, machine a Node.js, Docker, and the Subscript CLI. Uh, Subscript CLI is just an MPM package that you can install with the command that I showed you here, this one. There's also everything, uh, uh, everything that you need in the documentation. But for now, let's go to our IDE. Here, I have the project already finished here, but we're gonna essentially um, start from scratch. So, no, not here. And we're gonna select the substrate. Uh, template. This is a list of templates that uh, populates a project with some uh, pre-existing code for you, depending on what you need. And in this case, I'm interested in substrate only information, so I'm, I'm choosing substrate. Uh, let's uh, see into it and PMI and install the uh, dependencies. Um, meanwhile, uh, yeah, this is actually not necessary. And we can take a look at the project itself. Uh, if I add the correct folder, there it is. Um, this is like how a typical a squid project looks like. It has an assets folder, which you can leave empty for the most part. The DB folder contains migrations, which uh, change the schema of the database uh, to what you need uh, to operate. And the schema is actually defined here. Uh, like I said, you define the entities uh, and the schemas and tables, uh, the schema and the tables uh, through a GraphQL dialect. And this is gonna be automatically translated for you into code, into TypeScript models uh, that provide a, a higher level abstraction. Uh, um, and in the end, it's also going to be translated into uh, SQL commands uh, to create tables for you and to also populate the tables for you thanks to uh, ORM, which is a, a database abstraction layer. Um, this schema is already correct. I just need to add one thing, which is the balance. Um, why the balance is gonna be, become clear later. Uh, I basically don't want to solve the, the issue for you, so I'm using balance uh, storage as a, as a sort of like a, an example of what you could do. Um, so yes, and uh, the automatic translation to code is uh, part of the SDK and part of the CLI that I just uh, discussed, and it's done by running the code gen command. This is going to make changes to the source model uh, folder, and it's going to generate or regenerate in this case because I haven't changed anything other than a single field. So the only the account model has been changed, but as you can see, it has the balance uh, field for, uh, created for me. Um, this stuff also I discussed in the previous uh, um, uh, workshop. If you want to get deeper, I think Encode has recordings. So I'm going to speed through some of the things. If you want to explore different topics, you can either go to watch that recording, ask me, contact me, or uh, even the docs have a pretty good uh, explanation, all of, all of this stuff. But for example, this means that uh, it's an array of transfers and uh, derived from means that it's, this field is actually not going to be persisted on the database. It's just going to be well derived from um, uh, the two field of the transfer itself. So here, um, moving on, like I said, it's, it's making changes to this folder. And um, like I said, uh, we're interested in substrate uh, information and to access it, we have to know exactly the type uh, types with which the information is, is written on chain. And to do so, uh, our archives offer um, like pre-extracted metadata that we can access and we can use to uh, generate TypeScript uh, classes um, for, for our, our project. Um, the TypeGen uh, is where we configure this process and uh, it's this file right here. In here, we can define where the 
TypeScript files have to be generated, where to source source the metadata. In this case, it's the URL of the, um, the, the archive. But if you happen to have like a, a custom chain that uh, you run uh, an, a custom archive, uh, so it's not uh, managed by us, because it's at the end of the day, it's open source technology, um, you can save the metadata locally and you can just specify a local uh, path in here. Uh, the event balances transfer is already uh, added here. I just need to add the storage information um, in here and run SQD action. This is gonna generate something here in the types folder and it has generated uh, the support, uh, sorry, the storage uh, file which if we can take a look, I uh, requested to uh, know the types uh, related to, this, um, to the account uh, inf storage information. And he has generated this class for me, uh, which uh, has the name of the palette and the uh, storage information, and it's uh, labeled as storage uh, for obvious reasons. And, um, it's uh, the, the interesting thing, the, the added value of this process is that it's uh, uh, conscious of the changes in the runtime. So if you are aware of how Polkadot or Substrate um, uh, blockchain work, uh, it has a runtime, which is kind of like a when you use a console, when you change the CD or the uh, cartridge, it's essentially a way to change how the uh, blockchain behaves. And uh, some this is um, this can be uh, um, this can be changed. This can be updated uh, right throughout the history of the the single blockchain. And so the types that have been used to define certain events or certain storage um, information can change, can evolve. In this case, it didn't. It's just one version. But I think that if we pick the uh, event uh, balance transfer, it has multiple. As you can see, it has. Um, change in the way uh, it was written on change multiple times throughout the is history of the blockchain. Initially, it was just an array of uh, actually a tuple of a different field, which had uh, uh, an inherent meaning. As you can see from the comment, the first um, item of the tuple was the, uh, the uh, sender address. The second was the receiver and so on and so forth. And then it became uh, a tuple of three instead of a tuple of four because they got rid of the fee. And later on, this is sort of like a pattern with any event. They got rid of the tuple um, uh, sort of uh, structure and it became actually more of an object, right? Where it's sort of like self-documenting because you can give a, a label to each field. Um, moving on from the presentation, uh, I wanted to uh, give you a, an idea of how to work with the proxies as defined in here, because this is what he says, uh, right? He says that um, currently they fetch a list of proxy account by querying the proxy proxies uh, on chain. And this is a storage information. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm showing you all of this. Uh, it was a long and convoluted way to get back to, to this point. And uh, I'm actually showing you the shortcut which is accessing the storage. Uh, the best way to do it, I'm gonna show you by um, making the parallel between accessing the, the current balance of an account and doing the accounting by looking at the transfers, which is obviously an incomplete way. Uh, I'm gonna talk about it uh, when we get to the, to the end of the project. But uh, moving, going back to the presentation, how do I access the, uh, an accounts balance? Uh, I have created this simple function in here, which uh, uses the, um, the uh, class that we just uh, auto-generated to um, let me, like this, when, you, when I have the, the instance of the class, I can access many, so I can make a request to, to get all of the, um, all of the uh, how do I say, like, uh, all of the accounts in this array. And I'm gonna discuss what this array is in a second. But to do so, I'm gonna open the processor, get to the bottom, define the function first, and then we, we can see where it's getting uh, used.
Okay, I need to import a little bit. Uh, I think this is wrong. No. Du, 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 du. This is, uh, I made a, ch a quick change uh, before the, um, the presentation because I took this from a different project and uh, it's not the code hacks. Um, actually, you have to use uh, SS58, of course, because I was decoding, I think I was using it in Moonbeam, which has uh, hexadecimal addresses. Uh, so Ethereum kind of addresses where I'm now indexing Kusama, which has a different uh, set of addresses. So this is the function. What it does, given an, a set of addresses, it's creating an instance of this uh, storage. I would call this a storage interface, right? Because this is what's, uh, it, what it's allowing me to do. Uh, when I create an instance of it, I can just say storage uh, as uh, the version uh, 10, 1050, please get me many addresses and how many? This many, like the, the, uh, pro I'm providing the array uh, of the uh, addresses for which I want the, uh, um, the information. I also didn't do a safe uh, request in here because uh, one of the useful things that it, it, it does, that the class does for me is, is a check, right? It's allowing me to, to check, has this storage been written with this uh, runtime version? Yes or no? Uh, and I need to to be safe when I when I do this. Otherwise, I'm, it's going to throw an error. So I can do storage is ten fifty. Uh, like this, and of course, it's going to complain. Um, Account data. Mm. Oh, yeah, sorry. There it is. So I'm instantiating an empty array, and if the storage has been written with the correct version, then I'm filling it with the information that I that I get. Otherwise, I'm just gonna return an empty array. Um, yes, we should be good. And now uh, I'm gonna show you where to use this uh, this information. First of all, uh, I'm gonna create this call, and then I'm gonna. Uh, use it to um, save the information uh, of the balance for certain given accounts. But uh, let's go through, through the logic of the processor itself. Like what, what does this, this project uh, do uh, to this point, which I kind of like glossed over it. Um, this is uh, a, a instantiating a class of the substrate batch processor, which is in charge of communicating to and from the archive. It's making multiple requests for uh, uh, configure, uh, multiple configurable requests, and I'm configuring it to uh, to connect to the Kusama archive, and I'm configuring also uh, it to request information about the balances transfer. This is what uh, comes pre, uh, like it's pre-generated by the SQD init command that we have uh, created. Well, it, it's not here, but it's the SQD init uh, command that we did earlier. Because I use the substrate template, it's just automatically downloading the, this code for me, uh, just as both as, a, as an example and as a fully finished uh, project that I can and start making changes like I'm doing now. And once I configure the processor, I can then uh, run it. And the custom logic that I apply to the, the data is defined in here, in this uh, asynchronous uh, uh, function that I can use sort of like a, a callback. So every time the processor is making a request, it's receiving a certain amount of data, uh, a batch of data. In fact, it's not receiving one event at a time. It's receiving a bundle of them. And uh, I can choose to apply this function to, to the batch of information received. And in this case, I'm extracting the inf information contained in the transfers uh, event with this function right here. It's essentially looping over 
all of the blocks that I uh, uh, that contain the information uh, returned by the archive, and uh, it's also uh, processing one uh, item at a time. Uh, I have to make a few checks for safety just to make sure that uh, the information I'm receiving is uh, the the right kind. Because um, if, for example, I was requesting uh, multiple events in here, this is where I would have a series of if uh, item name equal event number one, event number two, etc. You could also use a switch, for example, um, to, to uh, well, uh, switch or loop over the message. And what I'm doing is I'm using the other interface to extract the or wrap the information in the, in the item uh, around this interface and then decode it uh, in here. Now, E is not a very good name, but um, is using the same paradigm that, that I showed you earlier, where I'm verifying that the event has been written with a certain runtime version, and then extracting it uh, accordingly. Uh, in this case, because uh, the event was written uh, at a certain with a certain runtime version, it's extra extracting it as a, a tuple. Uh, in this case, instead, it's extracting it as an object. And uh, what what the function is doing in the end, it's populating a series of like an array of um, objects. Uh, I define an interface in here with the information that I deemed necessary. Uh, first and foremost, these uh, three, like the sender, the uh, receiver, and the amount, uh, potentially the fee. Um, but I also have some auxiliary information like the block number, timestamp, which is not necessarily coming from the uh, event itself. It's coming, for example, from the block. Um, but it's still useful to save in, in my database, for example. And once this has run, for me, has extracted all the data, I have this, this array of transfer events. And what I'm doing with it, I'm making some, some comp added computation to uh, increase the performance. I could avoid this exchange of arrays and, and save uh, one item at a time. But instead, what I'm doing is I'm creating a set of all of the accounts that I encountered in the in this batch, and I'm checking if they already exist on the database. Uh, if they exist, I'm not. Uh, I'm just making changes to them. If they don't, I'm uh, adding uh, inf additional information to them. For example, and uh, this is what the get account um, function is doing. It's I think it's, yeah, it's defined in here and it's just checking, do I have it in the uh, set of uh, existing accounts? Yes or no, if not, I'm just creating it. Um, I think this is okay, yes. So let's go back to the presentation. This is the for loop that I, I was mentioning in the presentation, for let t of uh, t transfer data, and it's uh, this one. So just above it, I want to call this uh, get storage information, get account balances uh, up in here. And this is another improvement. I'm not doing it, for example, inside uh, the for loop. So I'm not doing it one item at, one item at a time. I'm only doing it one uh, time per batch to save uh, requests. Because uh, what this function is doing is actually contacting the RPC node uh, and RPC endpoint and requesting to the node to access the blockchain storage and give me, give me uh, the back the answer, which is obviously it, like something that could downgrade the performance because the requests to the archive are, are much more uh, much more efficient in that sense. And the other thing that I'm doing is uh, in here after I have extracted all the information and uh, uh, got the account, I'm doing this changing the balance field of the two accounts that I've encountered and, uh, and uh, just using the accounts data to, to, uh, to, this sense, to this purpose. So there it is. So as I said, I uh, have this sender account. Uh, it's, I, I, made sure, I made sure that if it's, if, it's on the database, I'm reusing it. If not, I'm creating it. And then I'm changing the balance value. Um, 
this should be it. Should be ready to uh, start the the squid. And uh, I mentioned saving on the database, but where does this where does this data go? Every squid has a Docker Compose uh, file, which launches a, a Postgres container, and this is where the data is saved. We have a shortcut command, which is sqd up, to launch uh, this container. Uh, just to show you what I'm talking about, the dashboard. So this is the container that we are looking at, and it's a Postgres database. And uh, what this is, it's defined here. It's just a container name, SouthSquidDB, and the image is a Postgres uh, image. Yep. OK. Uh, I, I talked about migrations and what these are. Uh, like I said, there are a set of SQL statements that modify the database uh, to create the tables uh, with the correct structure according to the schema that we defined. Um, so we had already a schema, exist an existing schema, and it's it was already creating the, the account table, the transfer table, but it was not exactly what we need because we had made a, a couple of changes. So in order to have the correct schema, we need to uh, clean the migration. So it's going to delete everything in here. And it's going to also uh, create a new one uh, with this one, with this command. As we can see, this one should have the balance field in here. As you need to. There we go. And the last thing we can do is just launch the processor, which is going to execute this file right here. As I said, it's going to instantiate, configure, launch, and execute uh, this function uh, as many times as the archive sends back information. Fingers crossed. I haven't made anything, any mistakes. There it is. OK. Um, free. I think I mistyped something. Yep. Accounts data free. Hmm. Let me check. Hmm. This is odd. This should be okay. Actually, don't know why. Oh yeah, for sure. It's also not happy about this because I don't know why it compiled though. Um, what happened uh, here is I don't know why this uh, is complaining about this, but uh, to make you understand what I just did, um, because I I. I Use this. Oh, yeah, that's why. I should not have done this. Should have done this. Yeah. So, because I have used this if condition, sometimes the array can be empty. So the the map can be undefined, and so this uh, accounts data could be undefined, and so it was not happy. But I don't know why you let me compile the the, the file. Should be doing good. Oh, damn it. Can read properties. Hmm. Yeah, this is not normal, honestly. I literally just ran it on the, like, before the, <laughs> um, before the workshop. If anyone has any suggestion from the audience, I would appreciate it. Right now, I cannot see what the issue is. Um, just to show you what um, we can we can skip really quickly to the uh, project that was working. So I can show you the what a squid does in the end and uh, how it looks when it works. Fingers crossed. Yes, there it is. So um, this project, by the way, I committed everything to GitHub. Uh, it's available. I think that Encode, um, Encode uh, staff has shared the link 
Um, right, it's not happy about it. But anyways, so this is what it's doing. It's, it's um, indexing uh, in batches. As you can see, it's saying uh, it's, it's managed to, it managed to index 76,000 uh, blocks per second and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's not happy because I forgot to specify the RPC endpoint uh, in here, which should have actually. Oh, that's why, okay. Why do I have it? Makes sense. So let's find a... Because now I'm getting stubborn. I actually want to... show you. Mm -mm. Okay, yeah, as I was saying, it's um, connecting to the, to the archive, uh, requesting information, and because we are not requesting that much information, it's able to actually speed along quite fast. It's like six, 60 to uh, 70, uh, 80,000 blocks per second. Um, it could actually go faster if we didn't uh, bother to request the storage, because the two things are running in parallel. It's sort of like requesting data uh, to the archive, getting a bunch of uh, blocks, right, with a bunch of uh, transfer events. And when he, when he gets to process one of these, he says, oh, I actually need the balance information. And so it's contacting there directly the RPC node. That's why I had to uh, find it. That's why I had to go and, and fetch it. And, um, and requesting the storage information. This makes sure that I have the actual information on chain Right about the balance of each of those accounts, but if I was uh, if I were a good accountant and if I knew everything about the blockchain, I could actually calculate those accounts because there's a certain set of events that influence the balance. For example, the transfer is one of them, but it's also like staking rewards, um, like you name it, right? And uh, for balance, it's a little bit more complicated, but in the case of uh, proxies. It's, I, I don't think it is. That's why I'm advising not to do the storage, although I, this is a simple, um, like, get out of jail card, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, and I forgot. Uh, we can also uh, start the uh, GraphQL server in a, separate, um, um, in a separate window, terminal window. This is going to open, a, like, open start a GraphQL server and open a port on uh, um, 43150. Uh, so we can go take a look. And let's zoom in a thousand times. Um, it's providing a few queries for me. Uh, they are also automatically derived from the schema that I decided. So I have all of the accounts and all of the transfers. Um, in this case, I can, for example, not the transfer, I'm actually interested in the account. And I can say, let's take the uh, order by balance. Yeah, let's see who are the 10 richest uh, Kusama uh, wallets. Yeah, it's not doing great because I don't think it has indexed much, but, um, well, I did the sending though. Yeah, anyways. Um, yeah, I don't know why it's not giving me the correct value, but uh, it's it, it's providing me this data, right? And uh, if I have made the calculation right, it should be doing good, but I don't know. And um, this is how you could build a balance uh, a tracker for some accounts. But what we're interested in, in this case, uh, is proxies. Uh, as the bounty said. So what are proxies? They are um, a way to allow users to uh, use an account uh, less frequently. So let's say you have a, an account with big bags, you don't want to use it with everything, but you can use it uh, to show that you have a certain balance and participate in the network, for example, with uh, voting and staking, but you don't want to risk um, uh, 
accidentally selling all your tokens or, or giving or burning all your tokens, right? So what you can do is like create a proxy account that only has a permission to do a certain set of things. In this case, let's say staking, and you can just uh, connect to the uh, staking dashboard and use the second account, the proxy one, to stake on behalf of the first one. Um, we have the documentation here from uh, Parity. And it's saying exactly what I, what I just said. Uh, I advise um, to uh, go go ahead and read it uh, thoroughly. And uh, one thing that I, I uh, wanted to talk about as well is the fact that oops, uh, what's next? What you can what you can do is of course uh, use what I just showed you, uh, access the storage, but uh, take into the consideration the the performance. Like I said, I don't think that access in the storage. Uh, uh, at, a at a certain, uh, I would say, interval of blocks is the right way to go. You could potentially uh, reconstruct the history of uh, proxies of a certain account. And maybe uh, even a better service for the DAP would be to have the history of those proxies, not just uh, who is the proxy for this account or is this account a proxy of someone else right now. You could also say, uh, was this uh, account a proxy of someone else at any point during the blockchain history? That's maybe uh, a more interesting uh, thing that you can, um, like more interesting functionality or feature that you can add to the submission. Um, and the way you can do it is, let's go to, for example, Samscan, uh, which I mentioned. Uh, it's a tool that I, I often use. Uh, let's use, uh, let's say, uh, Kusama. And the way I use it is, so then I choose the runtime uh, tool in here to navigate uh, the ballots and uh, what kind of events and what is the structure. So we're interested in the proxy ballot and uh, the storage information that was mentioned in the, um, in the bounty is this one. So proxies, it's just telling me a map of uh, who is a proxy to who. Uh, not, not really. Like, uh, like I said, it's on like one direction. Like, uh, given a, a, an account, is telling me which are the proxies. Uh, whereas we're interested in the opposite, right? But there are certain, there are a certain set of events as well that are generated whenever a certain action is uh, accomplished on chain. In this case, um, there's this proxy added, proxy removed, which look very interesting to me. Uh, let's say I create a new proxy for myself, I'm certainly going to trigger this event because I have um, uh, triggered, I have called this function, which is add proxy. Same goes for the remove or uh, remove proxies. And uh, I think that by indexing these, uh, you might have a better result and more performant, and you can also expand it to preserve the history, not just save um, the current status. Uh, I think this is it for the presentation. Yeah, uh, the last few things I want to mention to mention is the delivery method, uh, for especially for the the last one. Um, for the first two, you can you feel free, I guess, to uh, reach out to us. Let me see. Um, this is something that you might uh, be better off just uh, reaching out and maybe commenting in here with a link to your solution. Uh, probably same for this one. For the for this one, um, you could uh, make a PR towards uh, Giant Squid um, repository. This one, but as I said, it's fairly I wouldn't say unstable. It's more like it's uh, under very uh, fast uh, development, and you might not find what you were looking uh, at the day earlier. So you can start with an independent squid that just does what you're supposed to do, like I showed you. And um, if successful, we can work together on how to integrate it. What are the resources? Uh, I call this AKA shameless plug because uh, if you want to like dive deeper into the uh, squid development, I have a few articles on Medium and uh, there's a channel uh, from South Squid where I upload some tutorials. Um, and finally, actually, the best probably uh, the, the best source of uh, information is the docs. 
And um, if you want to look around, there's not just the giant squid. There's lots of interesting stuff being worked on on the subsquid uh, GitHub repository. And uh, you can also star it to see um, what uh, is the development, what are the issues being worked on, etc. cetera. Uh, finally, these two are mostly uh, resources, resources where you can ask questions. Um, we are... Um, I myself am present in both in Discord and Telegram answering questions. Um, thank you. Thanks everyone for uh, showing up. And uh, I guess if there's any questions, I'm gonna maybe stop the presentation. There it is. Disable. There. Yeah. Amazing. Hi. Thank you. Yes. Uh, we do have um just a couple of questions. So um, one of the questions that came in was from Frank, and he asks, um, "Giant Squid allows to fetch all parachains." Do I have to implement some piece of code for checking if parachain XY even has pallet XY implemented? Or does it happen mm. already under the hood? That's that's a good question. I think that you can start by making the squid configurable in the same way that I showed the giant squid is with uh, sort of like um, the, the best way is to uh, do the process of uh, type generation of like exploring the substrate metadata, et cetera, for multiple chains and have them um, stored on the repository. You can, that's why I showed the giant squid because we have done that. And um, it's, it's a good example of how to make your one repository um, useful for uh, multiple uh, chains. And then uh, actually that, that's the answer, right? So if a certain chain does not have the palette, uh, well, they, you wouldn't find. Right. You wouldn't find the, 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 the storage or the event, et cetera. Amazing. Thank you. And um, I guess a question just from earlier on. Uh, again, uh, could you show how to subscan to schema entity? How to subscan to schema entity? Right. Okay. So, like, from going from, where is it? Uh, from this, right? I'm... I know I'm interested in, let's say, uh, the example I showed, right? The, uh, let's go back to sure. here. And, oh, yeah, Sorry. I'm not sharing, I'm not sharing the screen. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Uh, share screen, um, entire screen. So let's go back to subscan. And uh, it somehow got stuck. Yeah, so let's say I want like get through the process of how the example came to be. Um, I'm interested in balances and I know there's the balances palette. And I know that actually this is all coming down to accounting, right? There's an account, it has uh, an, an address and a, um, a certain number of tokens associated with it, right? In, which, uh, of which is in, he is in possession. Um, and these are the events that influence it. Like I said, it's not just a transfer. There's quite a few events and not just here, actually. The difficult part about mm, account balancing is that it's not just a balances account, unfortunately. There's also other palettes and events that influence it. Um, but let's go besides that. Um, like I said, uh, for this project, the interesting part was the account. So that's why if we go here, we have the account uh, type in the schema. And like I said, uh, if you think about it, it's not necessarily pallet or uh, subscan to schema. It's more about what you want to achieve, right? Um, if I'm interested in indexing the transfers of tokens, I for sure logically have to capture each account, right? And I have to know its address. And I know that the address is unique by definition, so I can use it as the ID of this entity. Then what's next? This wasn't there, for example. Um, the only thing that this was doing was actually not necessarily um, capturing the balance. It was only taking care of indexing how many transfers does the, this account, uh, did this account do? Uh, throughout the history of the blockchain. So it has this many transfers uh, going um, in one sense and this many uh, like outgoing and this many transfers uh, incoming. And what is a transfer? So I'm capturing 
the essence of a transfer with this other entity. And I know that an entity can be unique because it can be identified by the block number and at least the extrinsic hash, for example, associated with the event. And then I have this information, of course, I want to know where uh, was this transfer coming, where was it going, and the amount. Because this information, let's go back to here, uh, transfer, is defined, oh, damn it, I click on the wrong thing. Uh, it was necessary to just show here, uh, to show this one. Um, this event carries this information. Uh, this is not very useful, honestly, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but because of what I showed you earlier, I know that the first field is the uh, sender, the second is the receiver, and this, the third is the amount. So I know I can save this, uh, these three, for example. Um, this is uh, the mental process where you, that you can use to, uh, to build a, um, a schema. Uh, if you want to transfer this to the proxy, well, you, of course, have to have an account and you could have, instead of a list of transfers, you can have a list of uh, associated proxies uh, as a minimum. But um, I would say to define the account, to, sorry, to define the schema, the best thing to look at is the bounty itself. Um, you can go, um, you can think of what they're saying here. They have to know uh, when you connect to the DAP, they have to check if your account that you're using to connect to it uh, is a proxy of something else. And because they need to know how many token does the proxied account has, uh, how much you can delegate. And uh, yeah, so th that's essentially what they are really interested in. Any uh, last minute questions before we wrap things up? Of course, feel free um, to uh, connect with us on social media. I've put um, Simo's Twitter also in the in the chat. Uh, so yeah, of course, feel free to ping any messages. Uh, if there are no more questions, um, of course, I'll let you guys have a lovely day, evening, morning, uh, wherever you are in the world. Uh, but of course, happy, happy Friday. I hope you all have a lovely weekend, a uh, very restful weekend as well. And we'll see you back on Monday. But also, massive thank you to the Subscript team and Massimo for this incredible talk. Ha thoroughly enjoyed the gifts. Um, so <laughs> yes, thank you so much. But amazing, everyone as well. Thank you for joining us today. And um, yeah, everyone have a lovely weekend. Bye, Thank everyone. you. Thank you for having us. Bye. Bye-bye.